Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining me. I thought I'd have you in to visit while I did some watering today. And uh, for those who don't like music in the background, um, <laughs> I didn't want to turn it off because Jack's busy working in the garage downstairs. And we have one of these old-fashioned 300 CD disc players that keeps going. And then we have these uh, little boxes that uh, some <laughs> somehow, when we're working on the sunny patio, we, we can have this music there. And when I'm out on the cool patio doing the chicken wire project, I can have the same music there. And it's not something you have to keep changing. And you just put in the, the whatever. We have a real big selection. And if sometimes something's on there, oof, why did we put that there? You can just pull it out, put a new one in. And it labels on the front what it is. So anyway, that's why there's music today. Because I didn't want to take the music away from Jack down in the garage. So... Today, it looks like we've had pouring rain for two days, just poured. Uh, so it's almost time to put things in the garden, and I'll probably be starting doing that soon. But it's going to be sunny with cloudy periods today, and uh, uh, looks like it's going to get nicer and nicer for the wet swell. So I'll soon be putting these all outside. But I wanted to have you here for watering day today, because um, I want to share with you a four, few things I used to do, I've changed, and what I'm doing now, and how I found whether it works or not. So, um, when I first started <laughs> my videos back in 2015, never thinking it would amount to this, and just for fun, I'm not, I, I don't want to take monetation, I just want to get on and do it. I want you to be able to come here to visit and not have to click a bunch of boxes away. So <laughs> anyway, I really don't understand too much about computers. It's totally amazing I've done this. Try to get me to do anything further like put writing on or, or little tips in and, and, and boxes and arrows. And, oh, it's not going to happen. So <laughs> anyway, um, when I first started orchids, and um, of course the purple one, the uh, dark purple one here, this was my first orchid from my daughter, and uh, it's got one more flower to open. And let me see if I can bring it a little closer. So when I first started with this one, I, I didn't repot it way the way I. I I think I got it in uh, 2014 or 2013. I'm not too sure to be honest with you. But you know, that's a good thing about YouTube. And I, I always say, oh, but somebody wants to show me some pictures. Why don't you start a YouTube channel? Because you know, it's such a good reference. Like you can go back, you can look how something looked when you repotted it. Um, it's it's just a great way to keep track of your orchids and really see well, you put something in a pot you want to see what color it was or you know how many roots you cut off if that's why it's sad you can go back and look at that and then you know but anyway um, these are getting watered once a week and uh, when I first started with these the only fertilizer I use, and I have these all over the house because they were the miracle growers. I have no labeled ones left. I peel off the labels, and I really liked it. That's all I ever used. But um, after research and trying different things, I ended up adding fertilizer to my water. And, and this is where I have quit now getting the spray. I missed just with water now and so I wanted to show you like these leaves are all firm there's one here it's an older one it's going to come off and uh, I'm, I'm proud of this one and uh, it'll be going in a, a comb 
Next time it gets repotted, it goes in a road cone, which I'll pluck paint because the other orchid back here just was a plastic road cone. We drilled holes in, and it's happy in there. It's so happy, I can't wait till it flowers again. But anyway, what I have noticed since I've been uh, using the fertilizer in the water, so when they're in bloom or when they're in spike, what I do is I've been using, um, wrong one, I've been using, this is not even an orchid fertilizer, but uh, um, this is what I've been using, liquid plant food. And this is all how much I've used. And uh, <clears throat> all, I mean, they say seven, seven drops in a liter, which is four cups. Now, I only use two or three drops in my sink and I'll put it, I'm going to put it in now. So I just, one, two, three. Now if an extra one falls in there, <laughs> I start out just using two, but now I'll use three. Um, and I stir it around a bit. And uh, this is for the ones in spike and in bloom. What have I noticed? Well, I've noticed that the ones are just newly potted like this one from the Salmon Arm Garden Show, and it has lost one flower. I picked one off. I think I seen it there on the last video. But uh, I have found, strangely, that uh, even though, even though um, I've just repotted it, I've been putting this in the fur. I found that this particular fertilizer has helped the bloom stay on longer. And uh, the leaf, um, sometimes the bottom ones, like when you repot, they may go into shock first. And so when you're watching, watch those bottom ones because they will get, get limp. But uh, these size pot, I find I'm watering twice a week now because it's getting so warm. But yes, I have found definitely there's been a big improvement of the quality of how the leaves are keeping and even the flowers. Now, so I'm, it's been, I've been doing this since they've come in bloom and I've, I mean, look at this, this is since December and I think they're doing really well. Even Moon Glow that had the baby taken off of her, I'm waiting for some real signs with the kaiki. So, um, I'm not going to have you here for all my watering because I think it takes me almost two hours because I wipe the leaves and I put aside two hours for that. So now let's talk, I mean <clears throat> over here are, I've got all my healthy orchids. Um, this is the one, um, this is one I repotted this year. The leaves are nice and firm. Uh, they all seem to be getting good. And what I'm doing with these ones is I water my I water my uh, my all the ones that are in spike or bloom first. And I just turn on the tap. Okay, let me pick one. How about this one? And what I do is uh, now I could have two sinks of water here. I could have one sink with um, no fertilizer and I could put them into soak or I could run water through. So first they're going to go in this sink with uh, either under running water or a sink full of water. Let them soak for five minutes there and then put them in the fertilizer. Um, the fertilizer is a very weak solution, but it's been working. And that way you won't burn your roots or, or you know, cause a serious problem. And then um, they're getting a good wash out before you do it too. So this is, this is what I've been doing and it's really been working. And then when I'm finished all the ones in Spike or Bloom, I have 
been using the Schultz's one. And I've used quite a bit because I used this also before I started using the Bloom Enhancer one, which uh, um, is the higher middle number, of course. Um, that was 10, 15, 10. It's almost a balanced fertilizer, but it's just a little bit higher on the middle number. Now, the Schultz's, this is the one, the 1555. This is mostly for root growth and leaf growth. And, and so when they're not in bloom, that's what I use inside the house. Because when they go outside, and I've done this through the heat of the summer. Last year there was no rain all summer. It was hot. It was over a hundred most days out there and they did well and this is partially the reason too. So in the house all the ones that I'm going to water that are not not in flower spike will get this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this is the one I even got written on here because <laughs> last summer I kept it out there and I wanted to make sure I fertilized my cymbidiums and I did and there are some cymbidiums I got um, out of Grassel. I don't know what color they are. Last, uh, uh, this winter the blooms came up and I don't know what I did but they didn't make it but I think I'm going to give them a little more fertilizer this year and see how they do. They look healthy, but the buds didn't come up and open. So I'm still learning about cymbidiums. So this is plant prod. And this is the one I use when all my orchids are outside. And I have, I have a jug that I mix it in, and it's always handy. So, and I always mix, like, I just take a pinch. I don't... I don't uh, follow the, th the direction, I take a, a little pinch, put it in my big jug of water and stir it around and that's how I use that outside and it really worked good so I'm, uh, there's lots here, <laughs> it probably lasts longer than I do. So there's that and uh, what else, oh yeah, um, so the, those are pretty well the fertilizer instructions. Now, uh, I want to also show you the good, the bad, and ugly. So today we're going to look at the ones that, uh, if you've seen videos of them in past, I was concerned about them when I first did them. They weren't healthy, and I'm a lot better at picking orchids now, but okay, I want to explain this. So I have the two that I did in lampshades. And they were up, of course, we never had to drill holes. They came with the holes. And the, um, there was a hole in the bottom because that's where the top of the lampshade held it up. Now, these never, they just, they did not want, they were real floppy leaves. And I think I even did a video, oh boy, last year sometime, trying to get them. And they did, they did perk up some. They're not all wrinkly looking but they're not like standing up firm so anyway that got better but then one day I noticed the leaves were coming but okay yeah this leaf here it was so small you can see so I, that's a sign like <clears throat> your leaves should be big if you notice that you've got leaves coming that are smaller than the other leaves something's wrong so you can look into your pot. So I did look into the pot, and you know what I found? There was leaves, very, very small. This leaf and this leaf weren't this big. Now this is a new leaf. And I thought, what is wrong? And I look in there, and way inside there was scale. So I knew I took it out the pot. I, you know what I did? I took some rubbing alcohol, sprayed it on it, I found scale deep inside, all in and in the roots. So then I took the rubbing alcohol, sprayed it on, let it sit for a minute, few minutes. I rinsed it off and I repotted it. And uh, 
This leaf is the one coming since I've done that. Now I'm thinking it's going to go normal. I don't think this one ever will. So this is something I've learned, but I'm sticking with them because uh, I think they both came in at the same time from the same place and I did both of them because uh, this is a new leaf on this one. They weren't as hardy, but now I think that they're getting some roots and they're looking a lot better. So I think I solved that. So sometimes if you see your leaf is not growing as big as it should, then you look and you think, why? And with the bark, as you know, it doesn't take long to dump the bark out, have a look, put it back. It's no difference to that plant. It's in the same one and I do it lots. So there was that one. Now, the other sad one. I have three, no, four sad ones. I'm showing you them all. So the other one, if you remember, I had in that cement pot and I was blaming the pot. I thought it wasn't doing good, so I took it out of the pot and put it in this pot. Now, it wasn't doing good at all. But when I had taken it out of the pot, the roots, there was no sign of new root growth. There was this tiny little leaf right here. And uh, this was a lot smaller. And I remember telling you before, it didn't look good because all I could see was this little ripple thing. And I thought, that doesn't look right. So I did repot it and I noticed this leaf is coming up better now. It could have been the pot. I am uh, keeping my eye on it. I'll be glad when I see some roots, but you know, if you have some sad leaves, like these ones, I don't take them off. I wait until they yellow and they quite naturally come off. But the top ones, this is the one with all the bubbly leaves. Now, they're not real firm, but <laughs> I am determined and uh, you know, there's some that are so healthy, you do them and they just take off. And whether it's in their genes or something that happened before we got them, and this one did have a lot of stress. When they get, and there's not just bubbly leaves, they were split and they came like this. So uh, I am, and there was split on older leaves too, if I can get in there. So um, this will be on the higher um, first number. I'm going to give them. So help strengthen them up. Okay, and last but not least, when I repotted in the mini in the sewer pot, I still haven't found any little minis. I tried where I normally uh, I normally order from Forest View Gardens, and they don't carry minis. And this is one I repotted in this year that. Uh, it wasn't real healthy when I put it in, but um, Mum had picked this one up and I thought, well, I'll just try. And uh, it's not real happy. So this one's also getting a little TLC, but I called it Purple Heart. So it is a beautiful flower, but it's just struggling. Now I'm still trying to get some little minis Anybody got any ideas? We're here in BC. I can order some little minis. <laughs> there's just nothing around here. So uh, anyway, there's that. So there's the good and the not so good. But they will be. You see, what happens is, is um, once you start looking after them properly, oh, a good example, a good example. This is what can, can be, of course. All but two leaves fell off of this. These are the two that stayed when I repotted it. And I thought it was dead. Now there's another new leaf coming. It's biking. It's got lots of healthy roots in here. Um, it's doing really well. And you know, you just have to bear with the ones that, that were all yellow and, and take them off when they fall off. And uh, when your new ones come, 
they'll be nice and firm and green. So yeah, you'll have some around that are a little floppy for a while, but when they take off, they will take off. Some of them take a little longer to adjust. So, um, it's all about orchid date. The cymbidiums are outside already with the amaryllis in my shady east side where my taps are. So now there's just my dendrobiums. Now, these are my dendrobiums and I ordered them, must be, oh, oh boy. It wasn't this year, it was the year before. And they came and they were so babies and, and I put them in these and I keep them in these because it stops them from falling over and uh, no sign of flowers this year but they're healthy looking and I, um, I have to do a little more studying to um, I have been reading lots but uh, they didn't flower this year, so maybe next year. We'll get the secret of them too. And, oh yeah, and then one little kind of fun thing, before I do my watering, um, as you know, we like going to garage sales. And I, I, at the thrift store actually, I found this, it was a dollar, but it's beautiful, look. Of course, it's for maybe putting strawberries in on a table to serve. Put one extra little hole in the bottom, and what a beautiful orchid pot. So I thought, well, when I get three new minis for my blue pot, I'll take the one that's a little sad there, Purple Heart, and I'll give her a beautiful dish, and she'll blossom. <laughs> she'll be fine. So, um... I think that's it for today. I'm going to do my watering, but um, I think the next video I'm going to do, I have a real kind of surprise of something I found and what I've done with it. So that'll probably be the next one. I'm not sure when I'll get it done. And um, thanks for joining me. I know we're crazy around here and I, I just love your comments. I feel like I'm getting to know some of you and it's, it's a real joy. And uh, <laughs> that's it for today. And go out and enjoy some of the sunshine if you have some because I sure will later. Okay, bye for now.